Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I will be doing a discussion on my guide to the Star Trek literary universe, specifically into the post-Nemesis books. Um, I'm going to be giving my uh, thoughts on where you should start, on what are the most important series, what are some of the best series to get into, and also understanding the general flow, because it is a bit uh, cumbersome to understand. There is not a traditional timeline in the Star, Star Trek novels in the same way that there are for the Star Wars novels or for other series. This is because of a couple of reasons. One, there are so many more Star Trek novels. The last I counted, there were over 700 total. But at the same time, uh, it's not just that, but there's so many novels uh, takes place over huge expanses of time. Some of the novels just have a little bit of time. Some of the novels overlap. Some of the novels connect, tell the same story in two different places. It gets all weird and confusing. So, uh, I'm not recommending all of them, and I can't can't get into all of the different types and all the different series and all the different everything. But what I can do is give you a brief guide to the post-Nemesis books, which is what I've read the most of in Star Trek and what I've enjoyed the most. I've enjoyed the post-Nemesis books the best because I think that they're, the, they're just the most accessible and just most fun to me as a whole, despite being convoluted. So before we... Uh, before I go into my thoughts, let me explain how the post-Nemesis uh, series of books started. A couple of big shifts happened in the early 2000s with Star Trek publishing. Star Trek had been doing two books a year as they had numerous TV series to cover. You had DS9, D Deep Space Nine, you had Voyager, you had The Next Generation, and you had the original series, and then you had the spin-offs like Dave, uh, Peter David's The New Frontier books. You had all these books that were, had been coming out for quite a while, and they, would all, they were all selling mildly successful. However, uh, when Deep Space Nine ended their TV show, there was no indication that they would go on to make movies in the same way that the Next Generation had. So, therefore, D Deep Space Nine, they were done with all their stories, and there was a blank slate given, and anything after the finale was fair game. And so, the various... Um, uh, editors at Pocket Books decided to start making their own interconnected universe, and that started with the Avatar series for Deep Space Nine and continued on, and that essentially launched the, 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 the post-Nemesis books. But the reason we call it post-Nemesis is because the uh, events of Star Trek Nemesis was a banner moment, because that was when big things were happening in-universe, that was when the, uh, the studio decided not to make any more movies, and that was when the uh, authors were given total free reign across all the different areas, Voyager, Deep Space Nine, and uh, uh, The Next Generation, and what, as established in Nemesis, the new series, Titan, which was a new book series that they would be able to launch. So there was all this new free reign that was given once Nemesis was over. So that's why we call it the post-Nemesis universe. Um, uh, I A lot of the information I'm going to be talking about is going to be found, uh, specifically all the charts I'm going to be talking about, are the uh, almighty Star Trek uh, lit verse reading chart, uh, flow chart. And uh, I'll have a link in my description down below with it, but I'll also include an image uh, on screen. So you're not going to see my face for, for, for a little while on here. But basically, this shows how convoluted and how huge uh, the, the, the lit verse is uh, as it regards to the post-Nemesis universe. Uh, for some comparison, I did my math on this, and I counted roughly a total of 200 books as part of this series. That's a lot. That's a lot of books to get into. And to try to know which ones you should start at which time is hard. I have not read all of them in the exact order that I should have read them, but I was still able to enjoy all of them because they're all enjoyable books. Well, most of them. So uh, I've read about uh, 50 plus of them. I have not read all, but I've read about 50 plus of the post-nemesis books. So I'm about, about a quarter and I've read most of the important ones. So I know a lot of what happens. Um, in some of the books, you might find out information about books, things that happen in the other books, but it is not too uh, uh, 
how do I say, it's not too hard to jump in. Most of the authors do an excellent job of making sure you have all the information you need and making sure that they don't spoil too much uh, of, of other books if, if necessary. Uh, so I'm going to take the moment and opportunity now to discuss some of uh, the, the books that I consider to be the best books and the best starting places for books. Uh, in the lit verse, I'm going to be talking about The Next Generation, Voyager, Deep Space Nine, and the crossover books. Uh, there are some other series like the Vanguard series or the original series or relaunch books, things. I'm just going to be talking about some of the most important ones that I recommend from those. Uh, and so, to begin with, I'll talk about The Next Generation. The Next Generation has quite a few novels. I would say they probably take the bulk of, of the, the timeline uh, with how many books books have the Enterprise and its crew in them. Uh, so there's a lot of starting places that you could choose. I'm going to recommend two. The first one I'll recommend is the A Time 2 series, which technically takes place before Nemesis, but it's part of the whole post-Nemesis continuity, and it really lays a lot of the groundwork for the bigger universe that you'll read in all these books. And that is very early on the timeline. And so it is, a, and it was also published early on in the post-Nemesis uh, uh, book publishing. It was like, I believe, 2004. The second uh, Next Generation novel I'm going to recommend is the novel uh, Takedown, which is kind of a crossover book, but it's under the banner of The Next Generation. So that's what I'm going to count it for this. Um, Takedown is a novel that follows the events of the series called The Fall, but you really don't need to know that. It's very much a standalone book, and if you, all you have to know in this book is that something happened to Riker, and now he's got bigger obligations. And uh, this is a very fun, very quick, very fast-paced, if you just want a good standalone Star Trek story. This was one of my first Star Trek books that I ever read, and I loved it. And I hadn't read any of the continuity. So it proves that you can read the continuity and still enjoy it. Uh, so those are my two Next Generations recommendations. I have two recommendations for, the Voy uh, for Voyager. Voyager has a kind of sad history in the lit verse, in that Voyager was so far behind the other, uh, the other books in series. Uh, Christy Golden was the primary Voyager author for the novels, for um, the especially towards the end of its of the TV show's run. And then when the TV show ended, she had four books that came out afterwards. And then she just dropped out of writing Star Trek novels and hasn't written any sense. And I completely understand her decision. She went on to do bigger, better things. She went on to do Star Wars, World of Warcraft. She went on to work for Blizzard. She has quite a lot of uh, history, so I don't blame her for leaving. But she kind of left in a lurch, and so there were several years where nothing happened. And then Kirsten Beyer took over. You might know Kirsten Beyer's name as she's one of the writers on Discovery and Picard, uh, the TV shows. She took over and wrote a whole slew of Voyager novels. Uh, what am I, by my count, 10 Voyager novels, uh, not including her string theory books. Uh, she wrote 10 novels in a row for Star Trek that were all mostly excellent. And so I'm going to recommend two starting places. The first one is the Homecoming duology, which is uh, not quite up to the storytelling standards as some of the other lit first books. It still has that a lot of the feelings in tone and writing style that a lot of the pre-Nemesis uh, books had. However, this book pays off so much about Voyager's storyline. When Voyager comes home, there's so much, so many questions you have of what's it like readjusting? Uh, uh, what would the characters do with their lives? And everything like that. And uh, the Homecoming duology just does an excellent job of telling a quick version of that. And then you have the full circle relaunch of Voyager, which was taken over by Kirsten Beyer. And the full circle books are quite good. Uh, the, I think the best of the full circle books is the novel Full Circle, which is the first one in, in the series. And 
this was a book that ties into Destiny. It ties into uh, Before Dishonor, the Next Generation book, but it does it all in such a hauntingly sad and beautiful way. It pays off so much, it promises so much, and it takes the series in a direction that you would not have expected before reading it. Uh, And it's really quite a good series. And Voyager went off and did its own thing uh, because of this, and it was well worth it. So those are my Voyager recommendations, and I have only one DS9 recommendation I'll make because, I'm going to be honest, I haven't read too many DS9 books. I am currently working on that. I have a bunch in my possession now, and I am reading one as I'm recording this video, but... Uh, I will recommend the Avatar books. These are two books that are really short, but essentially work in the same way that Homecoming tells you exactly what happened after the events of uh, Voyager's finale. The Avatar books do a good job of telling what happened after uh, DS9's finale, and the Avatar books really are what launched the the post-Nemesis books as a whole, so they have that kind of gravitas to them of importance. And so that's my uh, av- uh, DS9 recommendation. So now I have three recommendations for crossover books and series that you should read. Obviously, there are so many others I could get into and discuss, but I can't get into all of them. So I'm going to recommend three. The first one is Destiny. If you just want to go into full-on crossover madness, Destiny is exactly where you want to go. Uh, Destiny is when all the books came together and Epic had, had an epic climax and climax with the Borg, and you see characters getting promotions and demotions and new characters being born and new characters dying and and so much happening in this book and its trilogy, and it changed so much of Star Trek for the better. And I'm very impressed by David Mack and everything he did in this trilogy. And so this is very important. It's a banner moment. And I would recommend some of these others perhaps beforehand. However, I think Destiny does a good job of explaining where the characters are that you don't need to have read any of the previous books to understand them. Uh, I will also recommend the Fall series. The Fall series is not quite as action-packed and as enormous in scope as the Destiny trilogy is, but the Fall series, which is five books by five different authors, uh, does a good job of telling political storylines. Uh, books two, three, and four in this series are some of the best Star Wars, Star Trek novels I've ever read. Um, books one and five are fine, but books two, three, and four are utterly uh, fantastic and spectacular. And probably, in terms of crossing over characters and events, does the biggest amount of crossovers of any of the books. And uh, the third one I will recommend is actually one that uh, the this flowchart doesn't recommend as a starting place, but I think is worth it because it's just it's the best Star Trek story ever told, and that is Star Trek Prey. This was the first Star Trek books that I ever read, and boy, did I pick out the right ones to read. I loved this trilogy. This is by my my favorite author, John Jackson Miller, and my goodness, does is this a good story. It's very, even though it's a crossover, it's kind of self-contained. There's not a lot of extra universal impact with this trilogy, but it just tells such a fun, engaging story that had me on the edge of my seat, both the first time and the second time that I read it. And so I think this is, this is late in the timeline. This is very late in the timeline. So, uh, but it's still, I think a good jumping in point because, uh, it just tells a quick story. You get a feel for how the crossovers work, but you don't feel overwhelmed in any way. So I recommend the Prey trilogy as well. So those are my recommendations for where you should start with the post-Nemesis Star Trek novels. If you've read the Star Trek novels for post-Nemesis, let me know your comments down below. Do you agree with my choices? Do you think I should have had other choices? Do you think the other books should take the place of the ones that I chose? Let me know down below. I'm very interested in all that stuff. And... Uh, let me know if you're interested in starting, if you have a particular character or a particular plot line or a particular thing you're looking for in your Star Trek novels. Let me know, and I will try to direct you in the right path, because there's 700 Star Trek novels. There's something for everyone, I'm sure. So until next time, I'm Jonathan Cohn. Please subscribe, and thank you for watching.